Shalom, and thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Jacob Prash's Unscriptural Response, Part 1. Let's begin. He speaks of the positive confession. It becomes most obvious that this video is one long smear campaign to paint David up as an unreformed word of faith, name it and claim it preacher. But upon some very simple review, we can say authoritatively, not only is David proven fully innocent, but Jacob has proven to be quite the deceiver. That he left things like the Word of Faith movement, but he hasn't left all of their doctrine. What is not stated is that not only did David leave behind the charismatic World of Faith preaching circuit over 20 years ago, but after speaking out dogmatically against the unscriptural Word of Faith and positive confession doctrine, he was completely blacklisted by his pastors and other affiliate pastors for it. He speaks of the positive confession, and he highlights Matthew 14, 22 to 28 of Jesus walking on the water. After claiming to us that David speaks about positive confession, Jacob reveals to the audience a deceitfully edited version of David's teaching, which makes it appear that David is affirming positive confession. Well, what does Jacob deceptively and conveniently cut out? Let's have a look. Jacob hides from us the portion which reveals his study is actually an explicit defense against positive confession. Let's have a closer look. The section removed is titled, Addressing Positive Confession. David gives us examples of scriptures used falsely by word of faith preachers and tells us these verses are actually about God's ability to create with his own words and not ours. He also states, this has to do with a person's heart attitude and not an ability to create with our words. Quite clearly, David tells us positive confession in a scriptural context is about God changing our hearts and attitudes for His glory and in no way about our own power to create material things by our own positive confession. Well, that is quite a thing, Mr. Prash. Quite a thing indeed. And just in case Jacob or Moriel take issue with using the term positive confession in a scriptural sense, then they may find themselves in apparent disagreement with long-term friends such as the late Chuck Smith and the late David Wilkerson. In his book, Have You Felt Like Giving Up Lately?, David Wilkerson states, First of all, I respect and love all the teachers and ministers of faith and positive confession. He also states, you cannot feed your faith only on self-serving promises of healing, wealth, success and prosperity any more than you can grow healthy and strong eating only desserts. Faith comes by hearing all the word, not just preferred portions. Chuck Smith also often spoke of positive confession in a godly scriptural sense and talked about coming boldly to the throne of God. Chuck states here, I cannot deny that many people have been helped and healed by making a positive confession of faith. Yet, to say that it is God's will that none of his children be sick is wrong. Pastor David seems to be on the same page as he explains the sins of presumption. We are called to walk by faith, not foolishness. I'm going to sell all that I have and give it to the church because I, I just trust God for a million land. I'm going to send me I've got so they've got to give you a fortune. That's presumption. That's foolishness and stupidity. Many Christians have acted foolishly. Stop taking the medication because God's your healer. People have denied things to that. As a secondary issue, we point out to Mr. Prash that if he was truly responsible to God and others for what he writes in his books, why then does he never use sources of any kind? Something called Foundation Principles that David published, he put in print. Now, I've written several books. I am responsible for what I wrote in those books. As TBC Kawaii points out here in his video, for in the article, Anton wrote the following about Prosh's 2015 video. Quote, Mr. Prosh frequently quotes others without any citations. This is true of all his books, as well as his sermons. It therefore becomes impossible to check his sources. Now, I've written several books. I am responsible for what I wrote in those books. Prosh wrote a combined 1,117 pages, and the kind of academic standard we are looking for by contrast of one and a half citations per page is 1,675 citations across Prosh's two books. 
not just responsible to the body of Christ, responsible to the Lord. So, how many citations does Prosh make in those two books so people can fact check his views on people and their motives? If you write something and teach it, you own it. Not quite 1,675. Prosh managed a grand total of zero. Zero citations. None. At the end of every chapter, when you expect a list of references, you find empty space. Every chapter. Not one footnote on any page in any book. They aren't scholarly works. They are just an opinionated jumble of true, half-true, and flat-out made-up information. The culpability for anything wrong is on the teacher. It's, it's on, on the, the teacher. teacher. Well, Mr. Bosch reveals that there are many suspect quotes in Jacob's books. If even the secular world has such high standards for scribal honesty and integrity, then why does Mr. Prash showcase such a low standard? Check back soon for part two of Jacob's unscriptural response.